When it comes to task management in Microsoft 365, you may be questioning which tool is right for you. Are you gonna use Microsoft Planner or are you gonna use Microsoft Lists to manage all of your tasks? And when it comes to Microsoft Guidance, well, we have two options and it's not very clear which one suits which audience. So we've had this question as well many times from people because it is pretty confusing. What is it that Lists give you that Planner doesn't and vice versa? We only had this question the other day from one of our subscribers, meaning it's a great time for us now to explore that and show you those key differences between Lists and Planner so you'll be able to select the right tool for you when it comes to task management in Microsoft 365. And if you find there's a huge amount of value in this video, we'd love it if you hit that like button. And not only that, subscribe to the channel to find more great content like this every single week to make you more productive with the tools you already have. So let's dive in. What does Microsoft Planner do well? Well, when we're working in Microsoft Teams, a lot of people use Planner and we can easily add it by clicking on the plus icon and add ourselves a brand new plan. That just takes seconds to do and inside of your new Microsoft plan, we can add our phases or buckets as it's known in Planner. Adding a task is as simple as clicking on a button and then adding the relevant detail. All of these fields become pre-configured for you to use. There's no need for you to become an IT developer to create your different fields to fill in your plan. As we can see here, we can add checklists, descriptions, assignment, and also we can add comments as a task moves forward. And we also have pre-built charts, allowing us to go into a chart section in our plan, do filtering based on different information in our plan, such as when a task are due, and even get a schedule view of all of our tasks. And that's all inbuilt and available to us in just a couple of clicks. We also have notifications built in automatically to send us emails and also that all important Microsoft to do integration, allowing those assigned tasks in planner to appear in our to do list. So there's a lot of great capability available to you straight out of the box when it comes to using planner. So what doesn't Planner do very well? Well, simplicity is a problem. In Planner, we don't have the ability to define a dependency or a subtask. This task is dependent on another in the plan. There's no way to note that. In addition, it becomes blocked and our statuses are not started in progress and completed. There is no ability in Planner to have a different set of statuses. That problem then gets bigger. If I create myself a new plan, for a project that's also associated to the one I created in our plan, such as in the scenario here where we create a product launch in the same team we work in, we can create a brand new task in that plan, but we once again cannot define a dependency against another planner, even if it's in the same team or group that is not supported in Microsoft Planner. So subtasks and dependencies can become a massive problem when using Planner and trying to understand what task is dependent on what. Not only that, we can also have a problem with assignment. Here, I want to assign my task to someone outside of my plan, and that will be Diego. Now, when I do that, you can see I get a nice message in Teams and Planner warning me that if I go and add Diego, it's gonna give him access to the whole team. And by that, I mean exactly what we see behind me. When I add Diego into that plan, by accepting that message, I inadvertently have given access to the whole team, all the files, and the plan as well. Something I see people fall for, unfortunately, in Planner and overshare their team and data. Don't adjust your YouTube sets. I'm just here quickly to tell you about something you're probably missing out on. Now, we send out video tips and tricks on how to get the most from Microsoft 365 every single week. And we call this email that we send out the Motivational Monday because we always need that kickstart right on a Monday. And so if you're missing all of our great content and want it delivered straight into your inbox every single Monday, all you need to do is head to the link below, get signed up and we'll do the rest. And we look forward to having you part of our great community where you can find all of this great content to be more productive every single day. Other than that, let's dive back in. So what does List do well that can build on those problems of Planner? Well, let's take a look. I'm gonna create myself a brand new Microsoft list in the same team and in the same channel. This is gonna be much the same as what we used in Planner, but we're gonna see some differences where it can build on some of those problems. 
We're going to create ourselves a brand new Microsoft list here. And I'm not going to use one of the templates available because there isn't a template for a task list, surprisingly. So we're going to create our own from a blank list. That also provides the flexibility later to fully define your structure of the data you want to collect. I'm going to give it a name and get started here. Now you'll see that when I click on new, there is only a title because I need to define the structure of this list, which is just like a table in Excel. Firstly, I'm going to go and rename the title column so we can have a bit of a task summary instead of the word title. At the top, I can now add further columns. I'm going to add myself a task description inside of my task list because we're going to need to know what each task relates to. Likewise, I can come in here and I can also set a status column. That status column is super important because I can now define additional fields that Planet couldn't do. So I can now introduce a blocked status allowing one of my tasks to be blocked, where in Planner, I just couldn't do that. Once I've set that up, that will become available for me to use, and I can even use color coding, which once again, I couldn't do inside the Planner to make it very visual when I look back at my task plan. In addition, when I assign a task, the person does not need to be inside of the team or group. So I can add a task to someone, such as Henrietta, outside of my team, and Henrietta does not get any access to the resources. But me as a project manager, I know that task has been assigned, but no access has been granted to Henrietta. Now what I've now done is also create additional task. Here is the same one we had in Planner. We're gonna create social accounts. But I wanna make this a dependency on another task. I'm gonna create a brand new column called a SharePoint lookup column. And in a lookup column, I can tie it to another piece of data inside of the same list. Here, I'm gonna set it up to connect it to the title, which is our task summary, and I'm gonna allow multiple selections from our data set. That now means that when I open this task, I can now set a task dependency, meaning this task has a dependency on the first one inside of our plan. And I can add multiple dependencies, which are all linked and visible inside of our task plan. So a great way to visualize those dependencies that also extends to project plans outside of the one we're working in. I'm gonna go and create myself a brand new list in the same team or group. This time, I'm gonna copy it from an existing list, which is a task list I just created, meaning that whole structure will be copied for me and there's no need for me to recreate it. Now inside of here, I can begin populating tasks in our new plan. But in this scenario, what I want to do is create a dependency in our original plan to this task, which sits outside of that task list. And I can do exactly that. Once again, with the power of a SharePoint lookup column, we're gonna go and create a new lookup column on this list. And inside of that, I can define as cross project dependencies. This time, selecting the list I've just created with that whole new task list. And once again, selecting the title and multiple actual items. When we save that, that now means in that task, I can click into it and I can actually mark as a dependency, a task from a different plan entirely. I can even click onto that and find myself in the review page so I can check that data really easily. So the ability to cross-reference data from another list becomes possible when we're using Microsoft Lists. So what does Lists not do so well? Well, Lists, has a problem. It can be pretty complex to get it running. So in here, I've obviously got my Microsoft list running as a task list. And on the right hand side, we see a drop down for all items. And by default, that's the only a view of the data you're going to get in Microsoft lists. So you're going to have to create yourself brand new actual what we call views to slice and dice the data. It's pretty easy to do. Here I'm effectively filtering by in progress and saving it as a brand new view. But Planner gave us all these out of the box. I didn't have to create all of these different views of my data. That's a good way to waste half an hour out of your day. Now, in addition to that, we also have to deal with things like board views and calendar views. They come straight out of the box in Planner. And once again, inside of lists, I can go and create myself a board view and get that configured to one of my different columns. But once again, time is taken out your day to configure that. The same with a schedule view. We have to go and create a brand new schedule view to do exactly that. 
And then once again, we get that all ready inside of Planner without any of the additional effort to set it up. So it's very straightforward to use those capabilities, but in lists, they're gonna take you some time. Likewise, when we look at Power BI and reporting, well, we have to use Power BI or another reporting tool to report on this data. If you have a Power BI license, you'll be able to connect this to Power BI and have Power BI build a report for you, which is, tends to be pretty useless out of the box. So that means additional work is needed for you to get your reporting set up that Planner do for you. And also, there is no ability to sync these tasks inside of Microsoft To Do. So you are going to have to rely on checking your list to get ahead of your day and keep an eye on what's coming up. And finally, another problem in this Microsoft list setup is that there are no notifications that are sent out automatically. That is reserved for Microsoft Planner when it comes to getting set up out of the box. However, I can show you a quick way of getting something set up to achieve that. But of course, Planner already comes with this. That's more time out of your day to get this set up. So if you do want to set up notifications on your task list, go into the free dot menu in your Microsoft Teams list and open that list inside of SharePoint again. Now in here, we will have options. Under Automate, we can now begin to set rules. So I can go ahead and create a new rule on my task list. Now when I do that, you can see we have a few options. Data in a column changes, a new item is created or it's deleted. So in that scenario, we could use a date or we could use when a new task has been created in this list to send a notification. And that is effectively how we can build notifications very simply in Microsoft Lists. As an example, when a new item is created, we wanna send an email and we can define who that has been assigned to. So very simply, when a new task item is added and I've defined the person it's assigned to, they will get an email notification stating that a new item has been added to this list. But that's not exactly what we call in planner notifications with a summary of task and descriptions. In fact, if we wanted to go there, what we'd have to do in the side of Microsoft lists, we'd have to head into the integrate tab and begin looking at a power automate workflow to try and achieve some of those notifications. So once again, that's time out of your day. And maybe that's expertise that you don't have when it comes to building notifications that planner can do straight out of the box. So where does this leave us when it comes to summarizing those differences between Microsoft Planner and Microsoft Lists? Well, in short, Microsoft Planner is simple and it's efficient. It means that we can create a plan and task. And we already have that set up ready to go. So it only might take you a few minutes to go and create your plan and all of your tasks. But Planner's simplicity can become a problem. In Microsoft Lists, we have so much more in terms of adaptability to go and build out those statuses that we don't have inside a planner, add new fields, create subtasks and dependencies, but all of that comes at a cost. That adds complexity in terms of how you're going to use Microsoft lists, leading to upskill or understand more about SharePoint. And of course, as we have seen, the report inside of Microsoft lists and task management isn't the best out of the box. Yes, we can use Power BI, but that may come with additional cost, not only for licensing, but for your time as well. Whereas Planner provides comprehensive reporting out of the box that you can use very quickly without needing to go and build reports in Power BI. So in summary, what do you choose to do your task management? Well, that's really gonna come down to what you need to actually achieve when it comes to your own task management. If you need things like subtasks and dependencies, then Planner may not be for you. Whereas Microsoft List may well be, also understanding that you need to know a little bit about SharePoint when it comes to building out those capabilities. But I'm sure between those two choices, you'll find the right one that's for you. We would hope that this video then summarize those key differences between Microsoft Planner and Microsoft Lists when it comes to task management. And if it has, we'd love it if you hit that like button on this video. And not only that, subscribe to this channel to find more great content like this every single week to help you become more productive with the tools that you already have. Other than that, we'll be seeing you in the next one.